Welcome. In this video, we're going to connect uh, the mean or average with basic algebra concepts. So we're going to go a little bit beyond your typical introduction for the mean and talk about how it connects to some basic ideas in algebra. So let's, let's quickly go over what it means to find the mean. Let's say we have a set of data. Let's write it over here. The number is 1 and 5, 2 and 6 and 3. If we want to find the mean of this data, what do we do? The first thing we do is add up all the data. Right? We add 1 and 5 and, and 2 and 6 and 3. We add them all up. And then what do we do? Well, then we divide by the number of terms that we're given. So here we're given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. That means we divide by 5. And when we do this, we find the mean of this data. So let's add up these numbers. We have 1 and, and 5 is 6, plus 2 is 8, plus 6 is 14, plus 3 is 17. Sorry, looking out there for a second. So 17 over 5, right? 1 and 5 is 6, 7, 8, 14, 17. And if, we, and if we keep going, right, this means 17 divided by 5, right, numerator divided by denominator. And we can figure out what that is because 5 goes into 17 three full times, right, 5 times 3 is 15, and there's a remainder of 2. So 3 and 2 fifths, or 3.4. Now what, what they might start asking you in algebra is a question like, well, if we added another number to this group, what number would we have to add to it to get an average of, and then they'll give you a number, something higher or lower than 3.4? Let's pretend the question is asking, how do we, or what number should we add to this group so that the average is not 3.4, but the average is 6? So our goal is to raise this from 3.4 up to 6. How do we do it? Well, let's let's think about this algebraically. If we are adding a number to this group, right? That means we're adding another term. So if I if I move this bracket over here, in this new set, we're going to have another number, right? And that's going to be called x. So now we have a new number, we're adding it here so that the new average of this set is is 6. But now notice, by adding a new number, we also have a new term. Instead of five numbers in the set, there are now six. So what does that mean? Well, let's use what we already know. The other numbers add up to 17. So now our new set will be 17, the old sum, plus x, right, to make some new sum. We don't know what that's going to be. And we're going to divide that by six, because there are going to be six terms in this new number set. And if we add them up and divide by six, what should our new average be? Well, it'll have to be six. So now we just need to solve for x in this problem. What do we do? Well, I'm going to actually I'm going to multiply both sides by six, right? Because here we're dividing by six. So if I multiply by six on this side, that'll cancel out and do the same here to balance it out. So these sixes cancel, and we have a new equation. I'm going to write it right up here. We have 17 plus x equals 36. And if we subtract 17 from both sides, we can solve for x. These cancel out, and x is equal to 19, right? Because 19 and 17 add up 36. So that means the new number we would have to add to our group is actually 19. And we should, we should test that out, right? Let's just see if it actually works. Because you, you know, as you're playing with algebra concepts, whether it's something new or slightly familiar, you should really, you know, take your answer and try to evaluate what that answer means. That's important. So anyway, our new number here is 19. So let's add these up. 1 plus 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus 3, right, plus 19 divided by 6 should equal... 6. Well, we know that the sum of this right here is 17. So we get 17 plus 19 divided by 6 equals 6. So does that equal 6? 
well, 17 and 19, as we just discussed, is 36. Divided by 6, does that equal 6? Yes, because 36 divided by 6 is 6. So this checks out, and it works. So one thing you know they might ask is, what number do you have to add to the set, right, if you, if you want to raise the average or lower it? And so you can set up an equation like that. But what you should be aware of is sometimes they're not even going to give you what the original numbers are. But that's not a problem, because what they will tell you is the average of those numbers. So let's just use that for a moment. Let's pretend, and here's the, the symbol for mean or average. They tell you that the mean or average of the numbers is 3.4. Right? That's what we found before. So, we're, so we know, of course, because we just saw the problem, that if you average up these numbers, you get 3.4. Now they might tell you that, and only that, and they would tell you that the average of some five numbers, we don't know what, was 3.4. What do we have to add to the group to get the average of 6? So we want to change it again, just like before, so mu equals 6, or the mean, I, I just said mu, and, and that's another way of saying it, equals 6. So how can we still solve that, right? Because it seems like we have less information. Well, if you think about what's been happening, right, to get this mean of 3.4, we have to take a group of numbers, right, add them all up, divide by 6, so take something, some big group of numbers in here, divide by 6, and that, oops, sorry, divide by 5, there were only 5 numbers there. So, so originally, right, based on this data right here, we took some group of numbers, divided it by 5, and that gave us this average. That's what they're telling you, right? They're saying the, the average of 5 numbers was 3.4. So that means they took 5 numbers, added them up, divided by 5, and got 3.4. So what that means is if I want to know what the sum of those numbers was originally, right, because that's going to be useful in this next part, what do you use that sum, what do I do? Well, really, you're going to solve for that sum by multiplying both sides by 5. Right? Because this will cancel out, and then now you know that the sum of those numbers will equal, and this looks confusing, I'll fix this, 3.4 times 5. And that's exactly right, because 5 times 3, right, that's 15, and then 5 times 0.4 is 2. So that means 3.4 times 5 is really 15 plus 2, or 17. And we knew we knew that's right because before we got that sum. I just want you to think about why that's happening, right? Because here you're taking the sum, dividing it by five to get the average. That's all you're doing, taking the sum. I'll write this down, dividing it by the number of terms, and that gave you the average or the mean. So they give you the number of terms, which is right here, and they give you the average. You can find the sum by reversing this process, by multiplying the average by the number of terms. So as a quick reference, I mean, and then from there on we can solve it as we did before, right? We know the, the sum was 17 plus some new number divided by six terms should have a new average of six, and then we can solve, right, without ever knowing the original numbers. But I wanted to point out here that um, if they give you the mean and, and some number of terms, just multiply the mean by the number of terms multiply the average by the number of terms to get the sum. It's kind of working on this whole principle backwards. And I'll show you one more example in a moment. I just want to talk about this for another moment before we show the example. Imagine that you have like these three things connected by a triangle, right? And so originally we know, or, or I'm saying here, that if you take the uh, mean and you multiply it by the number of terms, I gotta fit number of terms, you get the sum. Right? These things are connected. Mean times the number of terms will give you the sum. And also, of course, the sum divided by the number of terms will give you the mean. Right? The sum, and that's the thing you know right away, number of terms will give you the mean. And also, what you might not see here, we can kind of reverse these things. The sum divided by the mean will also equal the number of terms. So if you need to solve for that, you can. And you can see that connection here, right? The sum divided by the mean will equal the number of terms, just as the sum divided by the number of terms will equal the mean. And this is a simple algebraic trip, 
trick if I really want to flip this stuff around if I want to see that this this is true that the sum divided by the mean is equal to the number of terms I can play with this right here multiply both sides by the number of terms right this cancels out and I'm going to write over here that means the sum of your terms equals the mean times the number of terms which is another perhaps useful relationship and then if I divide both sides by the mean this cancels out here and divide there as well you can see that the sum divided by the mean equals the number of terms so if you know originally what this is right here that the sum divided by the mean the sum divided by sorry this one the sum divided by the number of terms gives you the mean right that's the classic mean formula take the sum divided by the number of terms and that will give you the mean by playing around this equation and looking at it from other perspectives you can deal with any problem they throw at you so let's try one just to really take take this with us so typically I feel like this is the kind of question you might get about some person in this case Frank taking five exams and they have scored some average in this case he scored 85 percent what does Frank have to score in his next exam to have an average of 95 percent so this is just a problem building on what we've already been talking about we have five exams here right so that means that the mean excuse me of the five exams, let's put it down here, is equal to 85%. All right, 85 for now. So how do we get that? And how do we find out what the sum of those numbers is so we can answer the next part of the question? Well, if the mean of those five exams is 85, that means you had to do what? Well, that means you had to add up a bunch of numbers, divide them by five, and that gave you 85. So the sum, right, of the five exams write a little 5 here for that, has to be equal to 85 times 5, kind of reversing that process. All those scores from those 5 exams. And what's 85 times 5? Well, 5 times times 80, of course, is um, 400, and 5 times 5 is 25. So this is 425. So the question is, what do we have to add to this to get a new average of 95%? Well, if we, add, if we add another exam, that means we'll now not have five exams, but now we're moving up to six exams, right? So the question is, what do I have to add to that sum? 425 plus what? Divided by six will give me 95. So now I just solve for x, and first I'm going to multiply both sides by six. That cancels this out. What is six times 95? Well, 6 times, and I'll write like this, 6 times 90 is 540. I'm thinking of 6 times 9 and 54. And then 6 times 5 is 30. So 540 plus 30 is 570. And we know now that 425 plus x equals 570. So to help, we subtract 425 from both sides. And x will equal 570 minus 425. So now we subtract. I'm going to borrow here. So you have 10 minus 5 is 5, 6 minus 2 is 4, and 5 minus 1 is 1. So that means, and this is, I guess, bad news here, unless there's lots of bonus on this quiz, but x will have to equal 145%. So we have to score really high in the next quiz, above 100 to raise that average. And um, this is, you know, I think typically the kind of problem you might see in an algebra class dealing with averages in the worked problem section of algebra. Check those playlists. We'll put a bunch of other different types of examples there. Anyway, I hope this helped.